John Geddes from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. This is a uh, pattern called the sea bass herring. Uh, the originator is uh, Barry Clark. We're using a, uh, an easy body tubing. And I'm going to attach that to my Gamakatsu B10S uh, size 2 hook. I'm going to pierce that through using the eye of the hook first. I'm using a, uh, a mono thread because I will be putting tension on this easy body tubing and I don't want a thread to break. Put a thread base in just behind the eye of the hook. Keep it up slightly. And I have some crystal flash material. It's a blend of a copper and a pearl. And I'm going to fish that through this easy body tubing. For this pattern, this is uh, going to be a two inch piece of tubing. It does stretch a bit, so I can make that a little longer. But at this point, I'm not worried about length. I singed the ends of the tubing before I applied it to keep it from fraying. So I fish the crystal flash through. Move the tubing back out of my way. I'm going to tie this in the front of the hook, but I'm going to give myself some room behind the eye of the hook, at least one eye behind the eye. Then I'll bring this tubing up forward. Pinch it slightly so I can wrap this tight. Before I get too tight, I'm going to rotate the hook and make sure that the hook is exiting the center of the width of this tubing and not off to one side. When I'm happy with that, I'll add more thread pressure to lock it in. If this hook exited the tubing too far back, it would pull the tubing downward, so I want to keep it close to horizontal. That's good, so I'm going to whip finish this. Now, take that out. And I'm going to reverse this pattern in the vise to do the tail end. I want this flash to come out as close to the center of the tube as possible and not at the base or at the top. So I will manipulate that a little bit, make sure I got that. Again, verify how everything's setting up. And then I will lock this into place. And whip finish that. Big loops to whip finish this. There is some finger manipulation that you need to do here to get everything out of the way. I do that minimum three times. And trim it off. I'm using an automatic bobbin, so I can't just put the bobbin down. It's under tension, so I have to lock it. So that's basically where we're starting. Now I've got to do the, the tailpiece. This mono, you could super glue it first, but it will be locked into place using the hot glue, which I'm going to use for this this tail. I have a magnet on my vise to keep the pattern 
in position. These are pieces of Teflon so I can get a quick release on the glue. Hot glue gun. I'm going to apply this glue starting at the back end of the tail. I have found that starting the glue at the back end of the body, the flash will gather itself and not stay spread out. So I'm going to start in the back end, apply a generous amount. Usually I'm just going across the width of these materials. Take a second piece of this Teflon and sandwich that hot glue between the two. To assure that I'm going to get a release, I have also taken a lip balm or chapstick and coated those pieces of Teflon with that. Give it a couple of seconds. And I will release that hot glue from the Teflon. And there's the start of my tail. Uh, proportion wise now, I have to trim this down. What I like to do is cover up the tail where I'm seeing the body. And as I pull my fingers away, I can look at the length. I can judge what's maybe close, but to really assure myself, go beyond that, say, oh, now that is too long. And then I can go back and take it off. And this is going to be a blunt cut just to get the length of my tail. From there, I'm going to make my outside cuts in a V shape using this corner and go down to where this intersects with my body. Come at it from the body side to get that taken off. And then I will hit the other side just the same way. Again, I'm kind of looking at proportion. I can trim this short, narrower if I have to, but do this a couple of times, you'll get the proportions down. Basically right now, my overall length of this pattern is three inches. I started out with a two inch piece of easy body. Now with this tail, now I'm gonna do my inside V Again, starting from this corner and working to a proportional point for this will stop. I'm looking at the inside of my scissor and at that space, if you want to call it a negative space, so be it, but looking at that space to, to judge how wide or how narrow that ought to be. This was a comfortable cut for me, so instead of going like this, I'll just flip this over and basically do the same cut again. Meet in the middle. And that would be a usable tail. So now I'm going to put this back in the vise to do my head in color. My head, I'm going to use the, the, the flat adhesive eyes, but then I will build that head up with UV glue. So my adhesive eyes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two different eyes to give it some dimension. I'm going to take this silver or gold foil eye, and I'm going to lay it on the gold eye, uh, on the red eye, with the red exposed on one side. That not only is a, a trigger color, but it sort of suggests gill plates also. Pick that off with your bodkin and keep your fingers off the adhesive. And lay that down on those eyes. 
and then pull the paired set up off the sheet. Again, use your bodkin so your fingers aren't taking the adhesive. I'll turn my pattern in the vise so I see the side of the eye, the hook eye, rather than any of the top or bottom. Place it. Rotate that hook. Look straight down on the pattern to see that those eyes are similarly placed from front to back. And then I like to rotate to look dead on at the pattern and make sure height-wise from top to bottom they're in the same place. I don't want them to be lopsided. There's little adhesive on there. I'm going to build up a head with a UV product. UV will settle, so give it a little time to work. I'm going to drop it between those eyes. It'll fill in the gaps. I'm going to do a couple of different stages with this. Not only fill in the gaps between the eyes, but to build it up from the front or back so you can see that it's leveling and getting down between any gaps between the foil eyes and the body. And I'll hit it with UV. I give it a fair count of at least six seconds or so. Then I'll flip it over and do the opposite side. Don't go too crazy with the UV until you see it fill where it needs to fill. Give it, give it a little bit of time. If you need to make any adjustments, I'll take my bodkin and tease it into place. Hit that my UV. So now I'm going to double check the head itself to see if I can build it up. If I've got a, a dip behind this head, I'd like to make that just kind of blend a little better. The front end, I don't have really any adhesive on that mono. I want to make sure that that's locked into place because mono, once it's compromise, it may just spring all out of shape. So I'm hitting all sides of that. Rotate it, take a look at it, make sure it's kind of flowing evenly. Oh, happy, head of the light. I also kind of want to encase the foil eyes themselves in with the rest of this head. You can use UV. And I also like to hit that with your standard head cement. Cover those foil eyes. Try to get the two products to, to meld together. And while I've got this head cement out or super glue, you hit that joint where the tail fin comes into the body just to really secure that. This can also be a weighted fly. I could use a uh, brass cone inside at the head. Give this a little bit of time to dry, and then we'll add some color. Very nice. Now we're going to get into some color on this. I'm using four different colors. You do what you wish. 
but at the very spine of this pattern, I'm going to throw in some black. What I'm going to do is gradate from dark to light. So from that point, I'm, I'm using a very heavy olive. So I'll slightly bend, blend that with my black and start creeping down the sides. What will happen was the, the darkness of the black will bleed out of the olive and make the olive the more dominant color as we come down the side. I'm going to follow this all the way down to the tail with this olive. And then as I go lighter, the dark color that the marker picks up will bleed out and the lighter color will become more dominant. So this is my lightest of the two greens. And I've come pretty darn close back to the tail on the body here. You'll be able to see this color and once I get this applied on your side. The fibers on the easy body are basically kind of twisted, so you have to go in various directions in order for this color to make contact. Now my final color is going to be a little yellow right up in front of the, the hook bend. And work it in. You're not going to see it right away, but it'll start showing up. The UV glue will not take that color really well, so keep your head size limited as far how far back that will go. But you can see that this pattern will have a very, very swimmy look to it, especially with this paddle type tail at the back end. It'll it'll kick off quite a bit. It's been a, a great snook fly for me down in the Everglades. The Flamingo area of Florida, it's a fantastic pattern. Again, sea bass herring.